Here we are in lesson 6.2, solving systems using substitution. We've already seen that we can solve a system using graphing, but we also want to look at another method because sometimes like in those last story problems, you could see that graphing was not the best way to solve that. So our vocabulary today is the substitution method. It says when you can solve a system of equations by solving one equation for one of the variables, then substitute the expression for the variable in the other equation. This is called the substitution method. You should put this on the first page of your notes. So a system can be solved several ways. Sometimes the method most useful for solving one is when you know one of the equations is easily solved for one variable. This is our substitution method. Here you can see in your notes that we are always looking when we solve our system for our answer to be in the form of an ordered pair x, y. So we're always looking for our answer to be an ordered pair. In these two equations, y is equal to 3x and x plus y equals negative 32. What you're going to notice is that y equals 3x. So what we're going to do in this second equation is instead of using y, we're going to put in 3x. So in place of where the y is, we put 3x. Now, the reason is we could solve a very, our equation with one variable, but not with two. So x plus 3x gives us 4x. We're going to divide both sides by 4, and x is equal to negative 8, only part of the solution. So when we divided by 4, we got part of our solution. We now need the second part. If we use the first equation, y equals 3x, we're going to put 3 times negative 8, which gives us a solution of negative 24. So at this point, it looks like this is our solution. When you do any systems, you always want to check. So we know it works in the first equation. The negative 24 is equal to 8 times negative 3. That negative 24 does equal negative 24. In the second equation, we want to replace our x with negative 8, y with negative 24. The question is, is that equal? And it does check. So, since we knew the one equation was equal, we were able to solve. As we look now at this next example, as you turn and you are in the next page of the notes, we are looking at what is the solution to this system. Again, remembering that our solution is an ordered pair. We look at the two equations. One of them is easier to solve for the one variable. And we would look at the second equation. Because we can easily solve for 1y by subtracting 2x, y is equal to 2x minus 3. So what we now want to do is substitute in 2x minus 3 for y in the second equation. So, or in that first equation, 3, but instead of using y, we're going to write in 2x minus 3. We're going to use our distributive property. When we use the distributive property, we're going to have 6x minus 9. We want to add our like terms. We also, in this case, are going to add 9 to both sides. When we add 9, we get 23. Adding our like terms together, we get 10x. We can solve, and in this case, by dividing both sides by 10, we get 2.3. Our answers, remember, do not always have to be nice integers. We can have fractions and decimals. But once we do get this solution of 2.3, as we're substituting in, you're filling in your notes, we now want to check. We've got to find what y equals. So we go to that equation, negative 2 times 2.3 gives us negative 4.6 plus y. We are now going to add 4.6 to both sides of our equation. When you add 4.6 to both sides of your equation, our solution is 1.6. So at this point, we have a solution of 2.3, 1.6. So our solution for x is 2.3, 1.6. Now remember, we used this second equation to check it. So to do our check, what you always want to do is go to 3, and it was y, which is 1.6, plus 4 times x, which is 2.3, And that has to be equal to 14. And if we multiply that out, you should find that that solution does check. It says, which variable should you solve for? If one equation has a variable with a coefficient of either 1 or negative 1, solve for that variable. It generally will always be easier than for the variable that has a different number coefficient. So 
if you could always try and solve for the one that either has one or negative one for the lead coefficient. Let's check and see if you kind of understand substitution. There's two got it questions. The first one is what is the solution? Use substitution. Same with the second one. In this first one, what you notice is that y is equal to 2x plus 7 and y also equals x minus 1. My hint to you is set it up as y equals y and then put in the two equations and solve. My hint in this equation that you are going to do on your own is that you would solve for x first. And so when we look at this equation, x is actually equal to negative 3y minus 7. And my hint is, is as you show your work to do this substitution, remember 6y plus 5, and you're going to put the whole thing in for x, equals 8. Remember our answer is always going to be an ordered pair. So our ordered pair, x, y, is what we are always looking for a solution. Make sure you do the check as you are solving this. We will take a look at those tomorrow in class and make sure you got them. Um, the last example that we are going to be taking a look at is a story problem. And a lot of times, remember with our story problems, we are writing those a lot of times in standard form unless they give us a rate of change. So it says a snack bar sells two size snack bags. A large snack pack is $5 and a small is 3 One day the snack bar sold 60 snack packs for a total of two twenty. How many snack packs? Well, keep in mind, X is our large, Y is the small ones at three. One thing you want to take, think about is how many total did you sell, and then the cost of them. So one equation generally deals with the number. The second equation is going to deal with the dollars earned. So the total number, X plus Y equals 60. The second one deals with the cost of each, 5X plus 3Y equals 220. Now again, if we look at this, in that first equation, it might be really easy to either solve for x and y. We're going to solve for y. Once we have that, we go to our second equation and replace the y with 60 minus x. Once we've done that, we now want to distribute. So as we are taking 3 times 60 and 3 times negative x, we then want to add our like terms. So if we are adding our like terms, and in this case, we are also going to subtract 180. So 5x minus 3x, be careful, they're on the same side of the equal sign. So when we add those, we get 2x. Subtracting 180 gives us 40. Dividing both sides by 2 gives us our solution of 20. So now what we want to do is go back to our original equations. And a lot of you could probably do this without doing too much substitution. 20 plus y is 60, y is 40. So our solution is 2040, which just means we sold 20, 40 small packs, and in this case, we sold 20 of the large ones. The question said, how many snack packs did the snack bar sell? So they told, sold 40 of the one and 20 of the other, as we are looking at that. Does it check? Well, what you might want to make sure you do is in this last equation is substitute in. If we put in 5, times 20 plus 3 times 40, does it give us the 220? And we have 120 plus 100, and it checks. It is now your turn to write your two equations. Remember, think of one with the number and the second one with the dollars. You're going to get your solution. Remember, your solution is your ordered pair. And then you want to answer the question, for how many new games did you rent? Good luck. I know you guys will have no problem with this. The last type of thing we need to talk about is the possibility of infinitely many or no solutions. So just like when we solved our linear equations, we had a possibility of infinitely many solutions or no solutions. How many solutions can a system have? It can have exactly one. That's what we've been doing up to this point. When we graphed and we found that point of intersection, when we had our ordered pair x, y, that's the one solution. It could have infinitely many or it could have no solutions. So here are our two equations. This one is set up really nicely to solve using x and replacing our x here with the uh, 
negative 2y plus 4. So we're going to start our equation and substitute that in. As we substitute, we're going to distribute, and it just so happens that 14 equals 14. Well, just like earlier this year when 14 equals 14, that always happened, there are infinitely many solutions. And what happens actually if you would have graphed these two equations, you would have seen, just like when we graphed, that one line would have been directly on top of the other one. Now, what about these two equations? If we look at these two again, this equation is solved for y, so we're going to replace the y with 3x minus 11. When we substitute in 3x minus 11, what happens is that negative 11 equals negative 13. Can't happen. So our solution is that there is no solution to this system. So keep in mind, just like earlier this year, 2 equals 2, it's identity, infinitely many. False statement, 8 equals 2, no solution. So there's one more for you to check. You could guess. This one is probably either going to be infinitely many or no solution. And as we are looking at this one, my hint would probably be, as we are looking at this one, that we might want to, if we are looking at this equation, um, set it so that if you line up your, if we are solving in maybe a nice first equation for y, um, and really it's not going to matter in this case which one we solve for, they're both kind of ugly, but what's going to work out rather nicely is if we solve for y, 6y is equal to negative 5x plus 8, and then if we divide everything by 6, I know it looks ugly, y is going to equal, keep it as fractions, negative 5, 6x plus 8, 6, and now we're going to substitute that into this equation. So we're going to have 2.5x plus 3 times, substitute in your y value, negative 5, 6x plus 8, 6, equaling 4. You're going to use the distributive property, and we will check in class if you had infinitely many solutions or no solutions.